Hello, I'm a PX Toy Cat, and there's no denying that redstone is one of the most creative parts of Minecraft. There are so many different things you can do with it, and some of those things are highly useful, or at least theoretically useful, and some of those things are the exact opposite. Right here, I have an anvil cannon that can launch anvils from here over to that house over there, and right over here, I have a free cake button that obviously, when you eat it, it's gonna, you know, kill you because you didn't realize it wasn't free cake at all, it was just cake that you paid for with your life. And honestly, these are really fun ideas that I've shown off in previous videos, but the truth is they're not really practical pieces of redstone, which is why in today's video I want to show you real redstone that I actually use in my survival world. Because what is the point of any Minecraft build if you're not thinking about the practicality of it? If you don't consider that every single piston you want to craft requires at least one bit of iron, one bit of redstone, as well as some other miscellaneous materials, but if you want to use a lot of pistons in a build, you need to know they come with a cost, and that cost needs to justify what you're actually trying to build with them. That thing might just be fun, but if you want to make your life a little bit easier, then it's important that you you do balance that correctly and that's where today's video comes in. Because I was just about to build one of the very few pieces of redstone I actually use in my Minecraft world and I realized this is a really weird sounding thing on the surface but it actually does make some sense when you dive into it and I figured I would explain all of the weird redstone builds in my world that really don't sound like they make sense but actually do when you understand a bit more and we're going to start with the first one, the one that I'm actually about to build the very first because I want to have an automatic grass moving machine and that sounds again strange on the surface but I want to have a machine that can move grass left to right very, very quickly if I want it to, so that if I want to, uh, you know, bone mill plants, rather than having to use a water bucket, which is what I do right now, to uh, pick up the plants that I bone mill, I can instead use uh, redstone. And just in case that sounds complex, let me just show you right here. As you can see, I've got myself some pistons. They're going to be able to move something from left to right, and we're going to have, uh, you know, perfectly one space of gap, which means everything should be able to move all the way here, and then all the way back over and over and again, and all we have to do is have a redstone power signal and have some form of, uh, you know, redstone repeat. Um, you know, to make sure there's a link between one circuit and the other. And then what we should be able to do is every time we turn this on and not turn it on, you're going to see how the two circuits actually go slightly out of sync. Or rather, I'll show that a little bit better. Just like here, as you can see, one goes, then the other one goes a little bit afterwards. Or I think it'd probably be better if I show this with everything working attached to it. By the way, this is one of the fastest redstone builds to make. And that's kind of the key point, point about why I'm making right here, is if a redstone build takes you hours to make in survival, it needs to save you and do, you know, hours worth of work for you, or provide you hours worth of entertainment or value, or whatever else you want from uh, said thing. But yeah, this is going to be simply just like this. We activate with a bunch of grass, which can you know, still function as grass even when moved. We have a bunch of grass just like this. We have there be a one block wide gap. We might want two in the end, but we'll see how this one goes. And uh, yeah, then what we can end up doing is once we set this up correctly with the right delays, we get a little bit of a loop going on right here. And then, have I got this one placed the right way around? I don't think that's true. But then what we can actually do is we can have ourselves very quickly, just like this, a non-stop series of redstone, which assuming it doesn't lock, which for some reason it did right here, but assuming it doesn't lock, then what you should be able to do is just like this, have redstone which moves blocks non-stop. For some reason it seems to light them all up as well, and for some reason they seem to be activating in very different ways to what I would expect. Maybe if I reduce the delay or add to the delay. There we go, perfect. So that's what I'm going for. As you can see, every single one of these blocks is being moved, as you can tell, based on the fact that it's lighting up, which you know, we'll just ignore that part of the fact for now. But now this means that if I place bone mill on it, the bone mill, uh, the, the stuff I placed in there is going to break nearly instantly. And then, then we can power for a huge stack of, uh, you know, bone mill very quickly, turn it off. And then as you're going to be able to see, all of the seeds, which are useful for my uh, wheat farm, and all of the flowers, which are useful for, you know, bees and stuff. I mean, also, you might just like flowers, but let's be honest, they're useful for bees. The bee, uh, you know, the flowers are going to collect themselves very fast too. And now we have ourselves a redstone machine I built very quickly that looks very ridiculous on the surface. There's no real need to have a dirt pusher. It, it sounds ridiculous, as well as looking ridiculous, but um, also I think I pressed it the wrong way. But yeah, as well as, so we have an entirely ridiculous sounding concept for a build, but it's one that actually does have some function to me. Yeah, this is, something's definitely gone wrong here. So anyway, you kind of understand the point right here. It's really stupid redstone that I built, and I had a reason to build at some point, and I can probably try and justify it the best I can. What other piece of redstone do I have around the world, vaguely like that? And of course you've seen one that I wouldn't even say is stupid, but actually, which is of course the bamboo farm where we have bamboo going around. We have actually quite a lot of effort put into this redstone because it is something that produces a lot of bamboo sticks me, something that's valuable for the fact that I can use said bamboo sticks if I want to, to create myself some, uh, you know, like some sticks. If you don't know, step one of the recipes to make sticks is just to use bamboo, which means we can literally take bamboo sticks, turn them into sticks, and now we've got ourselves, uh, you know, cheaper torches, which is handy if you're filling up an entire desert. So there's reasons for things like this to exist, but what other kind of nonsensical ones do I have 
around the world. Of course, the paranoia house is gonna have to come up at least once, right? We have a Minecraft house, deliberately designed to be the most paranoid invention we have available. And you can see how, uh, you know, just around here, we have some silly redstone to activate some uh, noises if anything comes nearby. And you know what? That's actually, you know, pretty easy to make. It's not too illogical. I know if there's gonna be a, you know, like an ocelot or a bird or even a creeper potentially coming to try and block my house, which is mostly made of cloth. So that's a clever thing to have. I then have something which isn't necessarily redstone, but I have the cake uh, <laughs> staircase because you're not know, building out of cakes. It's just a fun thing to do. But um, also it stops from not being able to climb the staircase. So that's kind of fun. But the redstone part of this that I wanted to talk to you about today is actually this little button right here. All you have to do is press this button, which you can do with your bumper if you want to, or you can do it with a bolt if you have one on you. But all you have to do is press this button right here and you'll push all of the cake out there and you'll break them all. It's really sad. It's really tragic. I really hate having to rebuild these by the way, because you have to eat so much cake just to get each layer to be correct. But however, let's go ahead, let's do this anyway. Let's show you what happens if you attack this button, because all you have to do is hit this button right here and you can instantly, with a single second, break the entire staircase down. This is something which I think is really stupid and mostly exists to prove a point about something, but you can destroy literally 12 cakes or 14 cakes, I think it is. You can destroy that many cakes in that short amount of time. And it's really cool to me that it can do so without any real long-term effects. I mean, actually the redstone around here gets kind of messed up, but the fact that you can destroy, uh, you know, cake that easily because it can't be moved, the fact that you can destroy so much of it and the entire staircase up to a place, I really love it as a concept. I love it every time I do this and it's a really, it's it's a lot of effort to put it back together every time and I think, wh why do I do that just for these videos? But this is what you get uh, when you watch the videos. You get to see the glorious, uh, you know, definition that is Toy Cat fixing things up. Also, yeah, I had my button in the wrong place <laughs> before. Um, fun fact, if you didn't spot, I actually had my redstone laid out wrong. That's how little I like to use this redstone, but still, it was a 20 second thought that allows me to laugh at it every now and then, and sometimes that might have value to you, I guess. Unlike the next one here, which really every single time I see it, I'm like, you know what? What was I thinking when I even built that? So here is the bank of Toy Cat. It's of course meant to be a very safe place where I was gonna store all of my mineral blocks in Minecraft, so I had one good place to store them all. And so of course the place is very fancy, uses a lot of iron for the bars, iron for the wall back here, uh, you know, eat iron doors, etc. It's a fancy place, and there's a bank vault where all of the stuff was going to be stored. I used lots of, you know, clever protection mechanisms, and uh, this was just in case someone drew my wall, they wouldn't be able to get the stuff because they wouldn't know the security mechanism as well as I did, maybe, question mark. Or just in case, like, you know what, it's a fun, goofy uh, you know, concept. Why don't you go for a lot of effort to protect your best stuff just in case? You never know, you know? And uh, in this case, I have something kind of clever where there's two, two doors right here, and if you're, you know, thinking about it, there's two doors, one of these will activate the other door, and one of them goes through to there. It's kind of clever stuff like that. However, there's actually a first little door right here with an unlock door button. You have to pull this one down. I actually leave it down by default because it doesn't matter anymore. And then you have to get back through this door, which I just realized you can't do by default. I ever, huh? Am I just, am I just trapped in here? Well, you know, then <laughs> really good redstone, as you can see, high quality. This definitely isn't incredibly stupid redstone, but yeah, you have to go through here. You have to press the unlock door button. Then you have to go stand on this pressure plate because that pressure plate opens that door. This one opens this door. And then five seconds later, it opens this little hole, which will take you down to a obsidian filled room. This obsidian filled room then has, you know, like a little pathway leading you towards somewhere or other. I'm not actually sure where it's meant to lead you, just into the, okay, yeah, it leads you down to like a secret hole, which takes you into my mind system. So most people wouldn't find it that way. But the real clever part of this is the fact that on the other side of there somewhere, I genuinely don't know where anymore, on the other side of this lava wall, there was actually the real secret, which is the minecart right here. And this is, well, then that takes you down a cool way, which is where the real secret was, because here is a chest. But again, this chest was not the real chest. The real secret was that inside this glowstone block, it doesn't work anymore. But inside the glowstone block, there was there used to be a, mi a, a minecart hidden within it. There used to be a trick where you could hide chests inside of blocks because furnace minecarts would combine with the blocks there. But still, you can see, you gotta have a lot of layers of confusion going on. And this thing right here was actually apparently directly accessible just from my staircase. So you go all the way down the hallway and you find the chest, the chest filled with all the goodies, all the stuff you want, except that's not where the chest is because you know what? There's actually the secret chest in the ceiling, except that's not where the chest is either. The real chest was 
actually hidden inside the glowstone. There used to be a technique where you could get burnt, uh, you know, uh, chest mine carts to hide inside blocks, and they'd be pretty much invisible if you did it just right. And yeah, that's what we actually did. Um, with all of this stuff. It's really silly, and I don't really understand entirely why, but you know what? Stupid redstone, now you know. I had the most insane, ridiculous security system to protect something that I never even really implemented, but I love it anyway, because there's just something about this I find beautiful. Also, you can only go through this one way. It's pretty dangerous to go back, but let's do our best anyway. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Okay, we're fine. Just so you can see, by the way, how this ended up back in the mine, just down here, there is, as you can see, a trap door, which takes you right back into the bank. Aha, it all makes sense now, right? Because this is where the vault is. Because the vault, in case you're curious, was actually just a big trick. The vault was actually just a, uh, a bit of water, and then it takes you down into an obsidian room, which hurts you and then locks you in here. But yeah, that's the whole thing. It's fun. I like it. Goofy, right? But yeah, just for the record, to actually make a three-part redstone mechanism with a delay on it, uh, you actually need to do like a, a few little mildly complex circuits, again, for people who don't do redstone. And uh, yeah, I was kind of proud of this because it was something I just did for the fun of it. Like, uh, you know, setting up some redstone underneath my bank, it just felt like a fun thing to do. Uh, but it wasn't efficient in the slightest. This is stupid redstone that is just stupid. And I wanted to show it to you regardless because it's only beaten by one piece of redstone in my world. That piece of redstone is found in my wood factory. Or, I mean, lumber mill is what you probably should call it. But I call it the wood factory. It's a fun little build in the Minecraft world that I figured I'd spruce up. I mean, not that there's spruce in here, I guess. I figured I'd oak it up with some, uh, you know, redstone, which looks a little bit like this. And you might say, oh yes, what lovely redstone toy cat. I see exactly what you're going for right there. Um, and obviously, sadly, in the current version of Minecraft, it doesn't work because the block that this was based on, again, this is the one build I've ever made, which actually relied on a block which Minecraft later removed and therefore made it functionless. It just, it's now a bunch of minecarts which bump into each other on a redstone track. Let me show you what this was meant to look like though by going back to the old version of the world back in the old version of Minecraft where the block I needed still existed. Now here's the challenge. Will we make it back in time or will the Elytra die before then? This is this is entirely unrelated to the video but die is the answer by the way. Okay it took me a long time to get here. I had to break some stuff and also the, the colors just don't look right on this version of the game because there's different color uh, stuff that has to be set up differently. It's a whole thing, but this is the old Minecraft Xbox One edition, which is loosely based on the Java edition, where the furnace minecart, of course, still exists. And if you play this version of the game, you can actually set yourself up, if you really want to, something that'll look a little bit like this. That's right, it's furnace minecarts that spin around eternally, except over here, where they, they don't seem to care about that. It's furnace minecarts that... Come on, really? Come on, come on, guys, you can do this. I, I believe in you. But they're furnace minecarts that spin around eternally, and then they look like they're just little floating bits of carpet on your carpet. And you can kind of touch them from up here if you want to. That's kind of fun. What a fun piece of redstone, right? It uses a redstone torch, so I think you'll find it's technically redstone. It's something that's so, it was so stupid back when it used to be this, but it's even more stupid going back into the present because it's just minecarts under a rug that make a weird noise every now and then. And uh, yeah, it's things like this that make me question, why do I do the things I do? Why do I have the redstone I have? And this implanter is because when you have a seven and a half year old world or whatever it is, these sorts of weird things tend to happen. And you know what? I hope that in the next seven and a half year years, I look back on what I'm doing right now and go, why did I do any of that? Because if you don't make mistakes, then you don't learn more about, you know, yourself. You don't, if you don't, you, you don't learn what not to do by doing the right thing, you learn what not to do by doing the wrong thing. And I think it's important to sometimes look at your losses and rather than saying these are objective failures, to say, oh yeah, well, this is different, this is bad, and now I know I'm not going to do that. Um, you learn a lot more from having ventured and gained than you do from not having ventured at all. That sounds like a saying people say. Wait, no, no, wait. I'll, I'll turn it into a classic phrase. It's better to have loved and to have lost than not to have loved at all. Which I don't agree with, personally. I mean, if you didn't understand the concept of love, if you're an aromantic, then that probably seems sweeter than heartbreak, but I'm no genius. But, you know what I am? A giant dragon saying thank you for watching my video. Give it a like if you enjoy further content. Share it if you really liked it. And subscribe with notifications turned on if you want to see more videos that are better than this one. I'll be real with you. Unless you like this one, in which case, wow, they're just as good as this one, let me tell you. But no, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.